Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for part two of how the body of Christ works together. This is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. This is getting exciting now, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying means to build up. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. And I'm glad we went there. That we weren't really planning to go on, you know, and talk about ch chapter 4. But God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for a reason. And it's for the building up of the saints. When you become a Christian, you are not a sinner saved by grace anymore. This is a Papa Doug quote. Now you are a saint sustained by his grace. That's an important, huge thing that you have to understand as a believer. The Bible says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Right. Romans 3, verse 23. It says, for all have sinned. But just because we have sinned, after you, you pray and you become a Christian, you don't have to continue in sin anymore. Well, you there, shouldn't be. And you sin. shouldn't be in sin. No. You shouldn't want to sin anymore. You know, be, before we're Christians, we really can't even help ourselves because we're not filled with the Holy Spirit to change that. So even things that we're trying to change, you know, Paul talks about that. And people kind of get that twisted up what Paul is talking about. But what Paul is talking about is living a life when he's not filled with the Holy Spirit. When he wants to do good and the things that he wants to do, he still doesn't do it. That's a person trying to do it when you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. But when you do have the Holy Spirit in you, he's your best friend. That's right. And he brings healthy conviction into your life. And he corrects you when things are needed. So I mean, so the blood of Jesus forgives you of your sin, it cleanses you of your sin, and then it actually gives you the power to live a holy life. And I've said this before, the Bible says, God, well, God says, be holy for I am holy. If the Lord didn't think that we could live a holy life, he wouldn't be telling us to be holy. That's right. We can live a holy life. Do you know why? Because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. That's right. So stop just thinking your sin waiting to happen. Yes. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what Gina is, and that's who you are. And when you start seeing yourself as the righteousness of Christ, he who knew no sin became sin, so you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. You should repeat that to yourself on a daily basis till you really believe it and it gets in your spirit. Because when you see yourself as righteous and holy, you actually start living that way. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I am going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I am at verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences in ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Amen. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. 
For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works in all of these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So each one is as valuable and as important as the other. Amen. It isn't just the, the pastor that's important or the worship leader that's important or the teacher that's important. It is every person that is there participating in the body of Christ that is important. Amen. You know, we have some people that are greeters out on our parking lot as you drive into our church, and they are out there with the biggest smiles and the most warm, welcoming attitude, and they make people feel so welcome just pulling onto the lot. They you haven't even right. gotten in the door yet, yep. and they already feel welcomed. And they feel like they are um, wanted there. And then when you come through the door, there's other people there waiting to greet you that are welcoming you in as well. You know, you, you have the people that are reading the announcements. You have the people that are there um, running the coffee bar that are there with a, a smile and a hug and they're there to serve you a hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of cocoa and a muffin. The, those people are important too. If you come into a place and you're sad and depressed and maybe having a really difficult week and you know you're just kind of holding back the tears and somebody comes in and they welcome you and they tell you how happy they are to see you and they're so glad you came today. Do you know what that does for someone? Do you know how that changes how they suddenly feel about themselves and how glad they are they came through the door? Amen. That's really yeah. important. And the reason the people are greeting you while you're pulling in the parking lot or they're making the coffee for you, they actually enjoy doing that. They, they have do. found what really brings them joy and that brings life into them. And... The life is in them, and it just cannot even be contained that it's just yeah. going to come and rub off on you. That's right. Because they're doing something that it's it's in their heart, and they're doing it because they want to do it, not because they have to do it. And here's a free here's a free uh, point for you. This won't cost you anything. If you're doing something because you really don't want to be doing it mm -hmm. and you just feel like you're forced to do it and it's like a real drag and a real mm -hmm. bummer for you to do it each week, do yourself a favor and do the body of Christ a favor and step out of that position Yeah. so that there will be a person that would love to have that position and mm -hmm. do it and speak to the Lord, get alone and talk to the Lord and find your place. Yeah, Everybody do what brings has, you yeah, joy. Do what brings you joy. Because when you do that, that's going to be the area that you're going to have the grace and the anointing in. Where that's it's going to be able to give sure. joy to others. Yes, because remember one thing. In the church and as Christians, you things are being done a little differently. This isn't McDonald's where somebody's handing you a muffin and coffee. And they don't even <laughs> look at you and it's like, you know... No, this this is where they're they don't just hand you that. They're making you feel loved and they're making you feel welcome. And they might, you know, when they hand you something, they might take your hand and pray for you. They might bless you. They might say, "How is your week, Ben? Is there anything that I can pray for you for?" I mean, we are the body of Christ working together, but for one person, it's greeting someone out on the parking lot. For another person, it's doing the praise and worship for another person. It's the teaching. It just depends on where your gifting lies. Amen. But each one is just as important as the other. And know that 
and find the place that you love to be in. Mm -hmm. Do what it is bringing you joy because if it brings you joy, you're going to bring joy to others. Good word. If you're miserable in doing what you're doing, you will be miserable and you will have a spirit of misery and you're not going to make anybody feel good doing that, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know if I read this commentary or not off of Ephesians 4. If I did, I'll read it again. So. I don't think I did. Christ is head of the church and Lord of our lives. A servant of the Lord never tells the master what to do, but quickly obeys everything that is on his master's heart. God gives gifts to fulfill his purposes. He wants every member of his body to know the fullness of his presence. All church ministries work toward this purpose. Mm -hmm. If you listen to that and pay close attention to the reading, there is a lot of his purposes and he, what he did. When I was reading Ephesians today, I read over it. Uh, I read it in a couple different versions, but every version that I read in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 1, it's amazing how many times it talks about he and his. It's amazing how much it talks about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we get the focus off of him. We get the focus on ourselves, and we come in, and I was thinking about this earlier, you know, we come in and we get so picky about the way that we like it done. And you talked about McDonald's, just going in and getting your coffee right. and muffin. If you are not careful, you can handle church that way. And mm -hmm. you start acting like, well, I like it when I come in. Uh, I like this part. Uh, mm -hmm. of, I, I like this. So I like this worship song, but I really didn't like that second song they did. And I like it when this worship leader is there, but I don't really like it when the other worship leader is there. And you become like yeah. the judge of what the preference is to benefit you. And you forget that it's all about him. That's right. Isn't that a good word? That is a really that, good that word. That makes me happy. And the other thing I was thinking about is when we talk about doing what brings you joy and fulfillment and what is operating in your area of gifting, along with that, let us also say this. Be willing to be stretched oh, that's and good. taken out of your comfort zone a little bit because... You, you don't want to go completely against what your gifting is, okay? Nobody's saying that, you know, if you don't feel called to be a Sunday school teacher and you don't like children and don't enjoy being around them, that you should force yourself to teach Absolutely. the little children. Mm -hmm. that, that is not the case. But you know where your giftings lie. And you know what brings you joy and you know what God is calling you to. And he's going to step it up. You're not going to just stay in this one little box. If you're really growing in Christ, you're not going to stay in one little box forever. And we all should be growing in we Christ. We should all be growing. And that's one of the things we love about the church that we're at at Redemption House is that we see people constantly being stretched and advanced and put in a little bit higher position and mm -hmm. and going out of their comfort zone and doing something a little bit more each time and that's so important because you can't stay in that one box forever you know because that's i mean that that is really you just, not fulfilling you're stagnant. you're stagnant you're not fulfilling your calling you start out in one place but then you need to advance to the next place and that means being willing to be taken out of where you're really comfortable mm -hmm. and you feel secure and safe and yes. be willing to say, yes, Lord, I will do what you're calling me to do. I'm a little scared. I'm a little nervous. I, I don't feel confident in this, but I am confident in you. Good and word. I know that what you are calling me to, you will equip me for and you will enable me to do it. So just be willing, um, you know, to be stretched a little bit and get out of that comfort zone and step into something new and be obedient even if it's a little scary to you because it's something new to you that's good and while you were mentioning you said redemption house if you are in the area 
or even if it's, if you don't have a good church that you're in, we would like to welcome you to come to Redemption yes. House Life Center. It is in Pasadena, Maryland. It, the address is 502 Victory Way. And we have a 10 a.m. service and a 2.30 p.m. service. Yes. We have people that live two hours away and they come to the church. They do. This is just absolutely an amazing church. To me, if I think about the closest thing that I could think of what heaven would look like here on earth, mm -hmm. it's this place to me. Um, I mean, you have people from every walk of life here at this church. And it is so diverse in every way you can imagine. And the people are so loving and so genuine and they just love the Lord and they're going after more of the Lord. And everyone is very, very loving and supportive of each other. Yeah. In in they're in getting each other to grow in the Lord. And you don't find that at every church. No, you don't. You know, a lot of people don't. Um take joy in seeing someone else grow in the Lord. But I really feel like at Redemption House, people do. They delight in watching each other grow up in the Lord. And they, they're there cheering each other on and praying for one another and helping each other. They really right. are. I mean, I've heard this quote before. A church that's alive is well worth the drive. I like that. And we understand there's everybody has a, a little bit of a different situation going on. But there are ways, and I've heard another pastor talk about this. Instead of giving all the excuses of why you can't do something, think of the ways that you can. Maybe mm -hmm. if it's it's hard, if it's a long drive or it's tough for you to drive, you know, maybe you can carpool with somebody. Maybe you could take turns, and maybe you guys can all come together mm -hmm. and split the gas money. Maybe it's too expensive. Right. Get a group of people to come together. And split the gas money. We would love to have you there. Again, it's Redemption House Life Center, 502 Victory Way. It's in Pasadena, Maryland. We promise you, if you come there, you're going to love it. You will. And they do have youth programs. They do have Sunday school. They do have Bible studies, men's groups, everything. women's groups, Marriage outreach groups. groups, everything. They really do. They have a fantastic food distribution every Wednesday and Saturday. So look them up on the internet, you know. Absolutely. So type in Redemption yeah. House. Well, we love you guys. It's been a joy giving this teaching. We hope it has helped you. And, you know, just when you, when you hear these things, don't feel like you have to get everything in at one time. Yep. If you can get one good thing out of a message, that's wonderful. We're happy with that. Yeah. So we're looking forward to seeing you next week. See you soon. God bless you.